On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, I'll be looking at brush opacity and flow techniques while dodging and burning in Photoshop so that you can maximize the effectiveness of dodging and burning. All that coming up next on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I want to look at dodging and burning, but specifically, I want to turn our attention to the opacity and the flow adjustments on the brush tool because that can make or break your dodging and burning. Now, there's many different ways of dodging and burning in Photoshop. I'm going to show you one way today, but as I said, it mainly centers on how to use opacity, how to use flow, and also how to use the combination of both. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to link this video. It's my dodging and burning workshop, working with the TK plugin for Photoshop. In case you're interested in something like that, it's going to give you a lot of different techniques for dodging and burning. So you may want to check that out, but the link will be at the end of this video. Now, exactly what is dodging and burning? Dodging is when you lighten up areas of the image and burning is when you darken areas of the image. Now to dodge, I would use like white paint, to burn, I would use black paint. Now that makes sense, right? And what I like to do is use a blank pixel layer. You notice I have a blank pixel layer called burn using black paint and a, another blank pixel layer called dodge using white paint. And you'll notice this dodge layer is in the overlay blend mode and the burn layer is in the soft light blend mode. So I like to use soft light for burning and overlay for dodging. Now, if I just get another blank pixel layer, and you'll notice it's in the normal blend mode. Right now I have black paint. And by the way, to get your default white and black paint swatches, you would type your D key, that's the shortcut, and you type your X key to flip those around. In other words, right now I'm on black. If I type my X key, I go to white. If I type my X key again, it goes to black. But right now, if I were to paint at Right now, the opacity is at 30%. I'm going to type my zero key. That's a shortcut to go to 100% opacity. And shortcuts are important to learn. For instance, a lot of times we want to change up our opacity. So if I wanted to go to 10% opacity, I would type my one key. You see that goes to 10%. If I want 50%, I type my five key. If I want 80%, I'll type my eight key. But what if I wanted 5%? Now, it's a little different for 5% because normally if I just type the 5 key, it goes to 50%. But if you hold your 0 key down and type 5 while you're holding the 0 down, you'll go to 5%. Or if I want 1%, hold the 0 key down and type 1. Now I'm at 1%. And again, if I type 0, I'm back to 100%. So that's kind of important to understand what shortcuts work for opacity. And we're also going to be working with flow. But just to give you a little idea of how flow works, to get flow to change, you would hold your shift key down and type like, for instance, five, that would take your flow to 50%. Or if you hold your shift key down, type nine, that would get you to 90%. If you hold your shift key down, hold your zero key down and type one, that'll take your flow to 1%. And again, to get it back to 100%, hold your shift key down and type zero. Okay, we're on this blank pixel layer in the normal blend mode. Right now, my opacity is at 100%, my flow is at 100%. If I paint on here, you'll notice I just painted black paint across here. So I'm trying to burn, so that's not gonna work out so well. Even if I lower that opacity to 50%, you can see the, the image showing through there, but if I paint over it a couple more times, I'll turn it black. So that's not a really ideal situation. And even for dodging, if I type X to get my white paint, again, if I go to 100%, I'll type my zero key there. It's just painting white paint. If I take it down to 50%, I'll type my five key. You could kind of see the pixels, but you see that ugly white paint over there. But if I come to the dodge layer and I still have white paint and I'm at 50%, let's go to 100% just to really show you. If I paint over this with 100%, look, you can still see the image showing through. If I go to 50%, it's going to be lighter, but the image will still show through. So you can see how the blend modes really work. Now, if I go in the burn layer and flip my paint to black, I'll type X. And now if I paint over here, that's at 50%, but you can see the pixels showing through. If I change it to 100%, I'll type zero and paint right here. You can still see the pixels showing through. So 
That's why blend modes are so important. You can still see the underlying image showing through. So you never want to dodge and burn with a normal blend mode. I'm going to go ahead and delete all three of these layers and start over again. So the first layer selected, I'll hold my shift key down and click on this layer and click on this trash can and those layers go away. Now I'm going to go ahead and give myself a dodge and a burn layer. We'll start off with a burn layer. So come and click on this button right here. That gives you a blank pixel layer. Change the blend mode to overlay. And now we're going to get another blank pixel layer and we're going to change this blend mode to soft light. And we're going to, on this layer, we're going to just type in burn. And on this layer, we're going to type in dodge. Now remember for dodging, dodging is lightning. You want to use white paint. For burning, you want to darken. You want to use black paint. Makes sense. Now there's different ways of dodging and burning. You can use different blend modes and things like that. I'm just showing you a basic way of doing it, which is a very effective way. But again, this video is basically centering in on dodging and burning, but utilizing opacity and flow. Before I start to dodge and burn the actual image, I want to show you some things about opacity and flow. Now, right now, my opacity is at 100%. My flow is at 100%. I have white paint. So if I paint on here, you won't see anything. But if I type X and you see black and I paint across here, you can see there's my black paint. Now, one thing I do want to point out to you, whenever you're dodging and burning, always have a very soft brush. In other words, right now, and here's a shortcut for your brush size change, your hardness change of the brush. Hold your control and option key down and drag to the right. You can make your brush larger. You can go up to 5,000 pixels or smaller. If you pull down, you can change your hardness to 100% very hard edge. Pull up, you can go to 0%. I like to use 0%. It's a very soft edge. And now I'm going to go to 100% hardness first, and I want to show you something. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. If I paint across here, see that edge is very hard. Now, if I go down to, say, like 10% opacity, and if I paint across here, now I have to lift my brush and paint again. If I paint again and paint again and paint again, but you see those hard, ugly edges, that's not good. But if I go and change that hardness to 0%, and now if I paint across here and paint across here and paint across here, you see those nice soft edges, that's what you want. So that's the first thing I want to show you. You definitely want to paint with a soft edge. Now, I also want you to notice my flows at 100%. We haven't got the flow yet, but when you're painting with opacity, when you paint across your image like this, and then you lift your brush, and then, or the left click of a mouse, in other words, you would left click your mouse and drag across and paint. You would release that left click, and then you would left click and drag again. And what would happen? You would add. You're adding 10% brush stroke across here. It's actually not a full 10% because you would think if it was 10%, if I went over here 10 times, that would turn solid black and it doesn't. It's basically, I think it's around 25% of the 10% to be honest with you. But every time I paint, lift and paint, lift and paint, lift and paint, or release the click and paint, I'm using a Wacom tablet and pen. That's why I say lift. If you lift your pen and paint again, it'll start to paint again. So it takes more than 10 strokes to go across there. So even though it's a 10%, you would think 10 times 10 is 100. It's not really the case. Now, let's try an actual burning on this image here. Now, remember, burning darkens areas and dodging lightens areas. I'll start out with a little bit of burning. Now, this is a technique I really like to use. I haven't got the flow yet, but my flow is at 100%. So with this scenario, flow at 100%, I like to keep a very low opacity. I'm going to start out at 10%. If I don't like that, if it's too strong, I can lower it. If it's not strong enough, I can raise it. But let's start out at 10%. Now remember, burning is darkening areas. So I can build depth and dimension into this image by darkening darker areas. And I don't have to get them all, but you know, you have to let your artistic eye look and see what you want. But let's say I want to darken this area right here. So I'm going to, with a left click of the mouse, paint across here one time. Release the left click, and if I say I want it darker, I'll hold my left click down again and paint it again. See how that's gotten darker? And that's what you do. But with this technique, you always have to lift the brush, because I paint a lot of times with a Wacom tablet and pen. And so, and right now I have a Wacom pen in my hand. So 
If I paint across here, I'd have to lift. See that got a little darker. I'll paint again. It's a little darker more. So every time you have to lift to apply more paint with this technique. I'll also show you another technique where you don't have to lift your brush. But I do like this technique. And to each his own, whatever you like. But let's just burn a couple more areas. Like I painted once. I painted twice. Paint over here once, twice. Maybe again. Maybe this area one. It's twice. Now, if I want it stronger, I could go to, say, maybe 20%. So I can type my two key. And maybe this area will be darker. Now I'm putting 20% down like that. Maybe right in here. Out here, I'll go back to 10%. So I'll just type my one key to get 10%. And just I'm just looking for darker areas, you see, and I'm doing the burning. But this is one technique, working with just opacity. So flow at 100%, opacity at 10 to 20. But you get the idea. Here is the before, and here's the after. Now the same for dodging, I'll click on the dodge layer, but now instead of black paint, I want to use white paint, so I'll type my X key. And you got to be careful with dodging. Definitely, I would say start out at 10% or lower and just try it. So I'll make my brush just a little bit larger, and I want to paint a little bit of white across there. That's one stroke. See, that's pretty light, and like over here, one stroke. And I may want it even lower, so let's take it down to say 5%. Remember. Hold your zero key down for the shortcut and then type your five key. So now our opacity is at 5%. So now I'll make the brush a little larger. So now I can give that one stroke, two strokes. Okay. And remember on a mouse, you left click and stroke, release your left click, and then left click and stroke again. And then we could come here and just paint. But with this technique, you always have to repaint. You have to unclick your mouse or lift your pen to repaint again. And then back in areas like this, back in here, make your brush smaller. And maybe you want to zing some light across these light areas here. Now, this is called freehand dodging and burning. Right now, I'm dodging. And then you can come back on these mountains back here and paint in here. You can even come up in the sky and look for light areas of clouds and maybe lighten those up a little bit. I'm lifting several times here and here. Maybe go over in here, just like that. Now, here's the before and after dodging. And here's the before and after burning. And now here's the combination of both. Here's the overall before and the after. But see that depth and dimension that's built in there? This is the method I use when I'm just working with opacity. Now I'm going to show you how to work with flow and opacity. Before we actually work on the image with this other technique using flow and opacity, let me demonstrate it to you on this white canvas. It'll make more sense. Now I have a black brush. Let me change my flow down to like 10%. So remember to change your flow, hold your shift key down and then type the number you want to change it to. In my case, I want to change it to 10%. So I'll hold the shift and type one. I have black paint. I'm going to draw one stroke across here and you see it. And I have not lifted up the left click of my mouse yet. So I can keep painting over this and never lift the brush and keep painting. It builds up really quick. So as you can see, there's a problem here. 10% is way too strong. For this technique with flow, I like to start out with a flow between 1% and 5%. I like to start out at 1% and I'll change it if I need more from there. But 1% is a good starting point. The shortcut for 1% flow is hold the shift key down, hold the zero key down, and type your one key, and that gets you to 1%. Now, I'm going to start painting. Now, I'm using a Wacom tablet and pen, but if you're using a mouse, you would hold your left click down and just paint away. So, I'm going to start painting here and never lifting, and I'm just painting and painting, but look at all that control I get. You see that at that 1%, it helps me. At that 10%, it was a lot stronger building up. But you also have opacity, which is very important. And whenever I'm dodging and burning, I like to have my opacity down to around like 20%. So just type your two key and now watch how much more control I'm going to get. You see how much longer it takes to build up? I mean, I'm painting, 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 painting. And it's building up very slowly. Now, if that's too slow, I can drag that up to say like 50%. And now I can paint over that again and again and again and again. Now, once it hits the level of a 50% brush stroke, it'll stop. And once it stops, I can lift and start painting again. 
But the cool thing is you don't have to lift your brush. You get a lot more control when you're painting with this flow and opacity technique. I like to leave my flow at 1% and drop down my opacity very low. And you get very good results. But if you want more accurate, precise results, then I recommend using opacity and flow together. And another nice benefit is you don't have to keep lifting your brush and then repainting. You can just paint and paint without lifting that brush and stop when you get it to where you like it. Now let's try this out on an image. And by the way, I put the first dodge and burn that I've done for you in a group and that's with the opacity method. And now let's try this other method. And I shut that group off. Here's the before and here's the after. But now let's try it with this opacity and flow technique. Now my flow is set to 1% and my opacity is 10. I'm gonna dodge first, I'm on the dodge layer. Now you notice I have black paint. I'll type my X key to get white paint. With this flow and opacity technique, now I haven't started painting yet. You can paint more like a painter where you can just never lift your brush but paint and build up as you go. And it gives you a lot more control. Now I'm gonna start painting. And remember, every time you stroke over that area, again, it's building up as you paint. Okay. And we could come out in here. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush size and just paint across here. Never lifting the brush right through here. Maybe start painting over in this area a little bit. And I'll make my brush a little bit smaller, you know, and I can start painting over in here and over in here, over in here. I can come back in these hills and just paint like as if I'm painting on a painting. And just like that, it's all you have to do. Now I can come up in these clouds here and these lighter areas, and I'm see how I'm swirling that brush around, painting in these areas. Now remember, you need a nice soft brush, 0% hardness. This way, it doesn't look like you've just painted over your image with light paint or just lightened areas up, and it will look unnatural. So swirl that brush around, use a soft brush. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. Isn't that nice? And then if I want to burn, go in this layer, type my X key, and now let's start burning. So I'm going to start burning in here. Again, swirling it around, just looking for the dark areas, building it up. The more I paint, the darker it's going to get, like in here and here, over in here. But just try to mainly look for the darker areas. And I can make the brush larger and just paint over this several times, like down in here, kind of like a vignette in the corner here. And over here, maybe vignette a little bit. And then we could come up here in the clouds and maybe some of these darker clouds make the brush larger and just kind of darken them. And, you know, play those dark areas off the light areas. Like in here, I can darken this up a little bit. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Before and after. And then maybe over in this corner, maybe I'll darken this up and over in here. And of course, you could come in these mountains and darken them up. So here is the, let's shut these both off. Here is the burn before and after. This is before, here's after. And you know what? While that I'm on here and I still have black paint, I'm going to go ahead and darken some of these areas out in here. But this takes some time, but it's a real it's a lot of fun. I love to dodge and burn. You can really start to sculpt your image with this. So here's the before burning and here's after. And now here's before dodging and here's after dodging. Now, after you dodge and burn, I highly recommend that you put the dodge and burn layers into a group. And to do that, right now dodge is selected Hold your command key down and click on the burn layer and then just right click and come here where it says group from layers and you can give it a name and I think I'll call this DB for dodge and burn brush opacity and flow. Here's the opacity and flow group. So here is before this is the last one I did. Here's the before and here is the after and I'll shut this one off. Now here was my first one, dodge and burn. And remember, this was only using brush opacity. This is the before and here's the after. It's a little stronger effect. I made it a little bit stronger. On the uh, opacity and flow, you know, I had more precise control. So I was able to build things up, up slower and get a more precise result. But either way, they both look good. And remember, when you have a group, you can adjust the opacity on the entire group. So on this first one, 
brush opacity, I can go ahead and make sure I'm on that layer and take the opacity. I like to take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly. So this effect's usually a little bit stronger when you just use opacity, but if you use flow and opacity, you get more precise adjustments. So you generally don't have to pull the opacity back as much on that one. But they're two different techniques. They're both very effective. Try them both out. And let me know in the comment section below which one you like the best. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing!